tip to take another picture. <laughs> Perhaps raise your hands. <laughs> you <-hoo. laughs> Speaker's perspective, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the introduction. Um, like, like you mentioned, I'm, my name is um, Ben Erk, so it's a little bit stupid in English. Um, I'm working uh, at NetWays in Germany and I'm, I'm one of the co-founders of the iSyncer project. Um, I started a little bit in the reporting area there and now my responsibilities are more project management, community work, conference talks and stuff like that. Um, but I see that the slide set is a bit screwed up. Okay. So, about iSyncer. Um, how many of you know iSyncer or have heard of it? Oh, kind of? Nagios? Okay, I think it has its roots in Nagios, but it's much, much better. So if you know Nagios, you definitely will love I think I can say for now. So what I think is, I think it's an open source monitoring solution. Um, it, it focuses on monitoring, on alerting, on um, gathering uh, BI data for performance, for capacity planning, and stuff like that. So originally, we forked Isinga out of Nagios version 3 in 2009. We take the code base from there. Um, but since a couple of years, we totally developed our independent core, which is Isinga 2, which is production ready since June last year. It's a totally different code base and independent from the old Nagios work. We are a group about 27, 26 developers, depends on the free time working on Isinga. Um, we started primarily in Europe, but now we are worldwide distributed, a lot of in the US and South America. Um, and we have different teams on the project from day one, means we have independent responsibilities. Every team, the web, the core, they handle their stuff on their own and they are independent from the others. That we are, we are quick. The tool stack we have is, um, we have the Isinga core, it's in the middle, it's, it's probably the old solution, we still support, we do bug fixing, there will be a new release coming out tomorrow of the old core as well. Um, we have a reporting framework based on Chesper reports. Um, we have a couple of web interfaces, so we have the, the old classic interface, which is um, a beautified Nagios interface, and the Nagios interface it's hard to beautify, but you can do a little bit with images and uh, style shields and stuff like that. Then we, did, we started to develop something new, it's a Singa web um, based on XJS Agave. Um, but now we decided as well to do something new, which is Singa web 2, which I can show you later. But um, today I will focus on that Singa 2 and Singa web 2. Um, a short introduction if you have no clue what Singa is. Um, it probably, there are three main responsibilities for the monitoring system. The first of all is monitoring stuff that can be hosts, computers, storage, switches, or it can be, can be doors. If you want to monitor if the door is closed or if somebody opens it, you can do it via, via tools and there is hardware you can monitor with the SNMP. So you probably can monitor everything. Um, so that's, that's one thing, getting information about hardware. And one important thing in, in iSinger is that the the primary approach is like doing uh, monitoring in a regular interval every minute, every five minutes, checking the system. So really actively checking a system, not waiting for a, for an agent bringing data back to the to the monitoring server. Um, if something is wrong, and normally every time something is wrong, um, then you do a reaction on that. So you can execute event handlers, so you can send out notifications, um, typical email, short messages. You can do voice alerts meaning you can do text-to-speech and, and you can yeah, listen to the error message on the phone and dial a, a code for acceptance. You can open up a ticket or something else, however, whatever is needed um, to yeah, keep somebody informed about that. Um, another thing is like bringing the data out of Isinga because on every monitoring check, you get a lot of performance data. So you can see, um, does it work? How fast does a web server response? Is an SSL certificate still valid? And you can bring the data out. So we have standard adapters for, for Logstash, for Greylog. You can directly write to, to Graphite. You can write to OpenTCB since version 2.3 from Isinga, which is out since Tuesday. You can write to InfluxDB, so all these time series databases are supported natively, so you can directly write to them. Um, you can generate performance data, so you can do capacity management. You can do a little bit of prediction, um, but prediction is, is very hard. Like It's easy looking at a disk, you can see the disk could be full in two or three months, 
but like doing capacity management and, and forecasting for load is not so easy. But you can do. And as well, you can do reporting based on the data because you can write them to the database. Um, and this is um, um, a pretty easy source for, for business reporting as well. So what it is, I think, too, is based on C++. The older single core is just C, but it's not scales very well. You can make a single CPU hot on a good server, but no, don't use the others. Um, we have a powerful CLI. We support MySQL and Postgres databases. You don't need to run the database for the monitoring system, but you can do, and if you want to do, so we have to decide between all of them. Um, and we have background um, available, so you can start it very easy. Just just um, clone the Git, fire up the background environment, and then you can see how the cluster works or a single instance I think it works. So if you are in that area of configuration, if you know how an Agus configuration or I think a one configuration look, um, you have to run something because we broke up with the configuration. It changed a little bit, uh, but just to give you an idea what we can do now with Isinga 2 is we can have something like rule-based applies. So for example, we can based on host variables, imagine like facts you have in Puppet, you can apply services to specific hosts in the example number one, or like um, conditional, so we support if else and else if rules, where we can set specific monitoring thresholds depending on time zone, for example. Um, imagine that you have different thresholds during the normal day shift, and want to react if your disk gets full on about 60%, but you don't want to bring somebody out for 60% disk at night. So we can do something like, like time event thresholds with a pretty cool feature, um, KWIS 2.3. So the architecture is that we have the Isinga core and we have a couple of modules supporting um, the different features we, we have. So writing to database, writing to graphite, um, supporting cluster stack, um, and you can enable or disable every one of these features. It's done via um, the Singa CLI command. You can enable the feature or disable it. Um, it's, it works primarily like an Apache module or Apache website. It's creating a soft link of that feature. Means that you can have multiple Singa instances working together. I show you that in the cluster slide. And you can decide um, on which node you want to write to the database or want to write to Graphite or uh, execute active checks. So the cluster, um, a big challenge in, in, in the old monitoring environment was distributed data. So e-replicated data um, also means from, from, the, from the country, um, also from the security perspective, so specific network zones where you're only able to connect into or receive data. Um, this was you can did it, this was possible in the old world, like transferring the files or using SSH, but now we have a cluster stack based on SSL and certificates. You can use an existing certificate infrastructure, so if you have, still have one for Puppet, you can use them as well for Isinga. Um, and the cluster stack is included, means um, you can create mashup clusters, you can have multiple Isinga nodes with different responsibilities, and if they have um, the same knowledge, means the same zone, then they share the data. Means, um, for example, the server in the la um, left upper corner can execute a check, but you can write the result to the database on another server in the cluster or somewhere else. So all the servers share the data, and if you want to limit, uh, limit specific knowledge to a specific area, you can create something like a zone. So if you have only, for example, a specific country you want to monitor and there are only two servers which are able to reach the service there, then you can create a zone. Um, you can create multiple zones and they are syncing the state, they are syncing the configuration files as well, so you don't have to take care about syncing manually the files. It's Everything is done via a single port um, and a secured single port. So the web interface, I think a web tool, it's, it's not finished. It's in the beta 3 coming out this week. Uh, hopefully tomorrow. I'm not in the office, but I hope they will do their work. Um, it's hopefully be on the website tomorrow, um, the beta 3 version. Um, it's based on PHP. Um, we are supporting multiple backends, so we can read out from the database, you can read out from, from live status. Um, it's very fast, and we also took care about all the security layers needed. So we have just 
Isinga Web 2, we mentioned it as a basic framework. Um, the basic framework of the Isinga Web 2 interface takes just care about the backends, so reading, writing from the databases, takes care about authentication. You can use internal users, you can use um, a directory, Active Directory or LDAP, and takes care of the installation. But it's just the foundation. Means you can imagine the framework like something you have with perhaps WordPress and a plugin. So the basic Isinga Web framework has no idea about monitoring. It just provides the basis for the user, and then monitoring is a module for that. And monitoring is a module we, we deliver because without monitoring module, it doesn't make sense to install the framework perhaps because it's a monitoring solution. So it's, it's in there, we, did, we ship it, um, but you can add more. So we have a document model, we have a business process model to visualize business processes, we have something for graphite where you can show up graphite graphs in the web interface, and also PNP for Nagios. It's like an RD um, add on for Nagios Isinga where you can write your performance data in RD. So, how does it look like? This is the landing page. So, if you, if you knew the old interfaces where we have that number crunching in the top bar, we reduced it, we kicked them out because it doesn't make any sense to see that you have 3,000 hosts which are okay. It's nice, but it doesn't make sense. So, we focused more on the problems. Like on the left side, so you see the, the current service problems, or on the right side, um, the recently recovered problems. So if you were out for lunch, you came back, you see what's happened. So what's okay now, but we have a problem perhaps half an hour ago. Um, everything has a column design, so if you click on a row here, I hope the laser pointer works, oh yes. Welcome to the trans century. Um, you see the details on the right side. So if you click a host, you see all the details, you can, for example, recheck, um, reschedule a check for the host with one click. So you don't have to go to reschedule, yes, I want, do you really want it now? So it's just a single click to execute a recheck. And then one of the last, you have um, possibility to filter in detail. So you can filter every state by name, um, whatever you want to do. Like you see in this example, it's a little bit small, but I hope you can read it. Then you can store these filters and add specific filters to the dashboard, like filtering for a specific server type, specific state, responsibilities, host groups. Um, this is pretty easy. And also in the host groups overview, where you have more information in a much, much smaller design. It's also in responsive interface, so if you use this on an iPad or an iPhone, then the columns are going to be smaller, just one, three. If you have a big screen, then it could be that you have five or six columns. So it depends on your screen size. So what we have for now, um, we don't know how, who our users are because they don't have to sign up. They can just use the RPM or that packaging, whatever, so we don't know. There are some customers, we know that they're using it massively. Um, we see a lot of people coming over from Nagus um, going to Isinga 2 now directly. Um, we do a couple of community events, so our next over here in Asia will be in Kuala Lumpur in June. If you're interested in, we are searching for speakers and probably we're searching for people coming to the camp. That would be great. Um, and we do one in Portland, so if you join PuppetConf, it's the day after PuppetConf in Portland, Oregon. Uh, yeah, come to end, try it out. If you know background, please clone the Git, um, start up the background box. Rethink your configuration, so if you have an existing monitoring system based on Agris or Asinga, rethink about the configuration, try the new features we bring with Asinga to play with the web interface, um, and yeah, it would be great to give us feedback if you like it or what we should improve, um, and that's it. Thank you very much, and hopefully enjoy. Thank you. Okay, one more question. Yeah, we can one quick question. Uh, how do you compare against Sensu? Oh. How to compare to Senso, it's different. Um, make it quick. Oh, it's hard to explain. I think Senso has a totally different stack. I think the, the basic stack of Senso is more complex. Um, Senso has a little bit of a different approach and what I see, but this is just my personal opinion, that Senso goes enterprise. So there's an enterprise version of Senso and normally 
Nothing against an enterprise version. It's, it's another different model, but I, I think that all the new funny things will land in the enterprise version, which is not interesting for me because I see it from an open source perspective. And this is what I'm, I don't like. I, I hope that Sensor is a good open source monitoring alternative, but seeing the new features going enterprise is something I don't like. Thanks. Catch Bernd when he gets off stage as well. I think he can answer more in person. Thank you so much, Bernd. Big hands for Bernd.